Hello and welcome back to the Welsh Premiership Podcast. I'm your host Hayden Evans and as well as the regulars Tobias Hunt and Adam Cleary today, we're joined by a former Premiership player and title winning coach in Lee Jarvis. Lee, how are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. No problem, mate. Uh, firstly, uh, we'd like to pay our condolences to the late JJ Williams, who passed away this week at 72. JJ played 30 times for Wales, as well as representing the Lions seven times on tours of South Africa and New Zealand in the 70s. Back here in Wales, he also played for Bridgend and Thanethley, playing in the great Thanethley side that beat the All Blacks 9-3 in 1972. We'd like to send our condolences to the friends and family of JJ at this difficult time. Uh, so, Lee, you had a long and successful playing career, playing for some of the biggest clubs in the country, as well as gaining the Wales Cup in 1997. Uh, what are the standout memories from your career? Oh, um, I was quite lucky, really, because obviously my first year of, uh, of, of senior rugby was it, that's when I turned professional. So, um, you know, the stands uh, the stands out uh, obviously represent my country because that's all I ever dreamed of. Um, you know, at the time there was some quality outs and offs around in, in Jenks and Arwell. You know, with these guys, so I was constantly fighting with them. But, um, you know, it was great memories, um, you know, playing for the clubs of Port of Freeze, Neath. Um, you know, went out to Cornwall, played for the Pirates, um, representing the Barbarians and, and a lot of Caps of Wales as well. So, um, you know, it was loads to, to mention, but, um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for the world, really. Yeah, so as you mentioned, you went down to Cornwall and played for the Cornish Pirates and Mount Bay RFC. What was that like for your career? It was good. I, I think at the time... Um, I had a year with the uh, Newport Grand Dragons when it first went regional, um, you know, and I just wanted to get out of Wales, you know, because it is a, a goldfish bowl, as a lot of a lot of people said, and I just wanted to experience something new. Um, so I um, got got in contact with Kevin Mosley, who was at the time the Pirates coach, Cornish Pirates coach, and I had two years uh, professional rugby done with the Pirates, which is great, you know, a lovely place to live. Um, and then I was part time in and started doing my coaching badges with uh, Mount Bay, who um, at the time then was uh, a coach. It was Ricky Pello, who was obviously successful now with um, uh, the Exeter Chiefs. So, um, you know, he was just starting his coaching career. But um, it's certainly uh, an experience, you know, I'm fond of. And uh, I brought some great um, you know, sort of experience back to me. Yeah. In 2001, you left Ponty and signed for Neath, where Lynn Jones was head coach. What was Lynn Jones like to work under? And are there any other standout coaches? Um, yeah, well, you know, at the time I was with Paul and Preet and I was happy. Um, and he was up with the blue. It was our sign for Neath. I mean, I think it was around the Christmas time. Um, I had a phone call off Lynn. Um, and, you know, I was, I was, I was in Paul and Preet. I'm Paul and Preet boy. And he said he wants to come up the house to meet me him and my caddy. And sort of they they put an offer on the table. I couldn't really refuse, you know. It, it doubled my money straight away overnight. And it was for two years, and I just thought, you know, the game is quite short. Um, you know, I've got to look after myself and my family, you know, for sort of post-rugby, really. So, Lynn was superb. Um, you know, I, my mum probably would say he's the best coach I worked under. Um, and I think a lot of people would say that. Just, you know, his, his, his thought process on a game, and his, he'd allow you to do things that m- many other coaches wouldn't do, really. And I never I never went on the field playing for any thick, and I was restricted to certain things, you know, and... If I'd done stuff and it didn't come off, then, you know, he wouldn't give me a, a row or, or, or drop me, you know. He just sort of uh, put his arm around me and, 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 you know, sort of improve me for the next week. Yeah, and as I previously mentioned, you got one cap for Wales in 1997 against Romania. Obviously, it's every boy's dream just to play for Wales once, but do you think you deserve more caps? Oh, it's not that I deserved, you know, I put everything in. Perhaps I just wasn't good for that level, you know, and you know, I, I think I'm really sick in that way. It was it was areas of my games that weren't good enough. You know, I tried to my best to improve them day by day, week by week, and you know, perhaps they just wasn't improving. So um at the time, you know, you had the likes of Jinx and Arwell, well, like I just mentioned around. Um so, you know, the wheels day was was sort of my standard and I enjoyed that sort of uh, level. Uh, and I always thought I p- played well for Wheels Day, but maybe you know, just not, not that good enough for the next step up, really. You joined Merth as head coach in 2013 when they were in Division 1 and you just kept them um, from being relegated. And the next season, you did a double, winning Division 1 on the sway leg plate. Some are feeling up of doing a double in your first full season. Oh, they were they were great years, you know. And um, I, I was coaching the uh, Blues Academy at the time and, and Phil Davis was the director of rugby and... 
he called me into the office and he said, you know, I think for your next sort of step in, in coaching, you need to be a head coach. And, and Murtha at the time was struggling and they were looking for a head coach. So um, I agreed to it. And uh, I remember my first uh, session in Murtha, I turned up and I had six players there. So it was a struggle our first. We, I think we had to win three games or four games to stay up in Division 1. Um, and we'd done it. We went to Astrid Ronda, I think, and uh, we beat them quite uh, comfortably to stay up. So then it was building from there, really. I mean, uh, we went out and we signed a couple of boys back. Um, and I've got to be honest, then first two years in Merthyr was most probably my enjoyable, most enjoyable coaching. You know, we had a great group of players, uh, great boys, you know, on the field. They worked hard for each other, you know, but off the field as well. We, uh, we had some good times. And, um, you know, they were super. And doing the double, you know, winning uh, the Division One on the plate um, was superb, you know. And it was great for the club, great for the, great for the town. Um, and we had some good times, are you? Yeah. And in the 15 16 season, you won the championship to gain promotion to the Premiership. What was that like? Because you had the two years in the championship that took you to go up. Yeah. Well, well we knew, obviously, our first year in the championship, I think, before. Um, before Stur Stan started putting his uh, his money in, uh, you know we come third on 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 a, on, a, you know, on our league budget at all, um, but we knew then that uh, you know we had to get up the Premiership, and that's where um, Stan started putting or supporting the club and putting his money in, and we signed you know some quality players: Andy Powell, you know Craig Locke, James <coughs> um, from you know, how we James Tang, sorry from uh, you know from Ponapreet as well, so. Um, we had to get up the Premiership, and uh, you know we'd done it on a first on a first goal, uh, you know, and, and sort of they haven't looked back really since then. And you mentioned Andy Powell there. How good was he and big for the team, and some with his experience come in and help? Yeah, he was obviously Powell. He's Powell, isn't he? You know, I mean, Stan wanted a big uh, a big signing. Uh, you know, we went for Matthew Rees. Uh, we went obviously for Powell, and we got Powell. You know, and he was a big character within the group and, you know, people look up to him. You know, he was, he brought the boys together on the field just by his performances uh, and obviously then he, uh, off the field as well, he was a good crack as well. <laughs> and in your first season in the Premiership, you managed to win the league, beating Abraham in the final. How big an achievement was that for you? Um, it was huge, you know, considering that we, we were sort of four years, three years prior or four years prior. You know, six players training, um, you know, the development that went on, you know, in the club, you know, albeit with uh, financial support as well, you know, uh, to win the Premiership, you know. I think people expected it because of the squad we had, but, you know, they didn't see the work that went in uh, from everyone, really, from the players, the coaches, to the committee. You know, it was it was, uh, it was was unbelievable. And, and certainly that day down in Abraham, and, you know, we'll, we'll live, a, <clears throat> live a long time in my memory, really. It was superb. And the following year, I think Nigel Davis came into the club and you moved to back, be the backs coach. And then not long into that season, you decided to leave. So how come that decision, you made that decision? I want to join it, put it bluntly. Um, there was things going off the field. Um, I sort of lost a little bit of buzz for it. Um, you know, Stan is, is Stan. He, uh, you know, he didn't expect success. He demands it. And, uh, you know, I worked with him for a few years. You know, we came to a stage where I think after the Premiership final, um, you know, we were partying and we were celebrating till early hours, you know, and he was on the phone to me at 6.30 in the morning, you know, um, we need to do stuff about this player, next player. And, I, and that summer I didn't really, I wasn't getting there and I, I, we, we lost, I think, the first two or three games at the start of the next season and it had been building up in a while and I keep sometimes keep things to myself and... I just had enough. Uh, it was one of those that, you know, after that phone call, I knew, you know, I, I sort of taken them as far as I could. Things were going on. Things were happening off the field that I wasn't happy with uh, personally. And so it just, I thought it was the right time just to knock it on the head and leave it. And, you know, I am looked back really. And you mentioned uh, to Stanley Thomas. How big for the club was he in the time he was there? Oh, he was huge. You know, he was, uh, you know, obviously, he, the, the, what he's done to Murtha sort of off the field as well with the pitch and, you know, in the gym up there, but obviously his, his uh, support financially as well to get him where they are. You know, this is going to be obviously jealous people out there, um, but that's what happens when you do have a multi-millionaire backer, but, um, you know, he is what he is. He's a, he's a, he's a ruthless businessman. Um, you know, and he's, he's 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 certainly got success through uh, through Murtha, but his legacy is going to leave behind. You know, for what he's done for the club and the, and the town. You know, um, he's upset people along the way. I'm not going to lie. You know, but uh, you know, he certainly uh, his record speaks to himself.
So outside of rugby, then how's your how's your home life and your work life going? And um, have you been doing any coaching at all at the moment? No, I've, I I um, obviously left uh, Mercer, um, and then I sort of had a, a few months out, and I, I went to Bader then for a season, sort of not last year, I think the year before. So that ended uh, at the end of last year, and I, I've just had a year out to be honest, mate. I'm concentrating on my work now, uh, my job, uh, which is obviously um, is something I'm focusing on, and, and sort of that's my number one priority at the moment. And um, if a club comes calling, do you fancy getting back into coaching at all? Um, at the moment, I'm not, I'm not missing it. Um, you know, if it does happen, if it does happen, or it, it certainly have to only be part time uh, and work around my work schedule, really. So it's it's not my number one priority at the moment. Um, my number one priority is my is my job and and my sort of uh, my future in that, in that job, really, and getting better at that. You know, so you know, I'm not. I still watch rugby. I still enjoy it. You know, certain certain games anyway. Um, but like I say, you know, if I did get back into it, you know, we'd have to work around my, my schedule uh, that I'm working. And just a quick word on Wales. Obviously, they lost out in Paris last week. What what do you make of that game? And what have you made of Pivac so far in charge of Wales? Oh, there's there's a, <laughs> there's a lot of pressure on him this week, and eh? you know, let's, let's be honest. I, um, uh, I thought last weekend the game, you know, we were scrappy. You know, uh, France took any chances. You know, but Wales looked a little bit red, less and shapeless. Um, the defence was quite poor on occasion, but France's tries they scored come from turnovers or, or, or loose kicks. So you know um, they, they'll they'll be hurting this week. Um, he's made a few changes. Obviously, he's brought brought back a couple of bigger guys in in the pack. You know for that sort of uh, ball carrying presence. But I think tomorrow's game will be uh, it won't be pretty. It'll be a lot of kicking. It'll be a lot of driving. It'll be attritional. Um, and I'm thinking, you know, it's going to be, I think Wales will win. Um, I think they'll just edge it in the kicking game. And I think it'll be something like 18-12 to, uh, to Wales. And in particular, your old position outside half, there's a, a few boys. You, obviously, you've got Biggs, you got Patchell, Anscombe, who's injured at the moment. Who do you think edges that battle for the number 10 shirt at the moment? Well, obviously, uh, you know, bigger at the moment, and he's he's, he's sort of world class. You know, I know people are, are, are sort of uh, asking for him. To, I look at his uh, you know, Callum Sheedy, which I think has been exceptional uh, playing in the Bristol side. Um, you know, be a big. Uh, everyone will be looking at him really see how he goes in the Welsh jersey because it is different. You know, he'll be he'll be asked to kick a lot more, to exit a lot more. You know, whereas his Bristol, I think they let him. Uh, they, they pull the reins off him really, and, and he gets away with that, you know. So, um, you know, if you run run the, uh, the ball back in international rugby and you get caught, you know, you, you're going to be underneath the post or, or three points against him. So, um, I can't wait to see him playing the Welsh jersey, to be honest. And I hope he does. Let, I hope Pivak lets him express himself. Um, Patch is coming back as well. We all know what he can do. Um, and obviously, you've got Jared Evans as well, who's, who's playing outstanding for for the Blues. So, uh, there's there's a lot of strength and depth there. Um, all different types of players. You know, all different types of players and, um, you know, whoever plays, you know, I'm thinking they've got to sort of uh, change a game plan around the, the tennis playing. Yeah. And um, Sean Edwards said um, yesterday on the Don't Give a Ruck podcast that um, he felt Wales didn't want him. Do you think he's arguably a bigger miss than Gats? Well, it's, you know, going on last weekend and again, you know, there'll be huge pressure on defence tomorrow. Um, they will, but you know, for me, you know, he, he, he was at the time the best defence coach in the world, and I would have done everything and anything to keep him. You know, he, there was rumour he wanted a four-year or five-year contract or whatever. You know, for me, he had to be kept on board. Um, you know, he's gone to France; he worked wonders with them. Um, you know, it'll be, it'll be massive for Wales tomorrow to see how, how the defence, um, what's it called, how the defence stands up to it. Because you're know, letting, you know, arguably the best defence coach in the world just walk away without a fight, then uh, I think it's ludicrous, really. Uh, yeah, moving on to the Premiership in general, uh, the league gets quite a bit of stick from some people saying it's not good enough for the regional youngsters to develop. What are your thoughts on that? Well, quite strong thoughts, really. Um, I think, you know, listen, I, I've coached in the Premiership. I think Cardiff won it. When me and Phil Davis were coaching, um, I think it was 10 years ago, I can't remember the date, but the system worked well then. Um, you know, the Premiership was really strong. It was a great, um, great outlet for Welsh rugby, some good, good clubs in our Premiership. And the regional boys used to drop down, you know, even some of the Welsh boys would drop down as well and play in it. For some reason now, um, the people in the WRU have come up with this idea that's not good enough, which, you know, 
I can see it in a little way, but then if you put a little bit more funding into it and you upskill the coaches into it, then um, you know it's going to be at the level that they're happy with. You know, um, they brought in the A the A games last year, the year before. That was an absolute total waste of time, in my opinion. You know, a professional rugby player playing friendlies all the time. It's um, you know, for me, the Premiership is uh, can be a really, really uh, strong tool for their development, um, and you're part of a club as well. You're part of that environment that um, some of the regional players don't get. So, um, you know, I've enjoyed coaching in the Premiership. I, I've always thought that it's a, it's a good sort of learning career for the youngsters. Um, but bear in mind as well, they've got to come down and they've got to fit into that side and be good enough to play in that side. Because I've been coached, uh, I've coached in, with Cardiff and, you know, we used to have academy players coming down on one player because it, it, they just weren't good enough for that level uh, at the time. So that says something about it. So, um I think they've got to be. They've got to sit down and have a look at it because uh, at the moment they're almost sort of just pushing it aside, uh, and it, you know in the end it'll fade out, which which is disappointing really because it was going back sort of a few years ago. You know you had the likes of Warby, Alan Wins who played for Swansea. You know they've all developed through the Premiership. So for some reason now, um, you know the powers that be think it's not strong enough. But for me, you've just got to. Put a little bit more money into it, um, develop maybe the coaches, um, you know, and that could be a good tool for you. Yeah, that leads nicely onto my next question then, which is, do you think the regional youngsters are better off playing in the Premiership than regional A games against players their own age? Oh, you know, that's a million dollar question, really. Uh, for me, you know, it's certainly a young prop coming through, I, I know I'd... I like to be challenging against, you know. Um, it depends what the A games are like, really. Um, you know, it's, it's almost gives you sometimes a sense of unreality, really, because uh, they go out there and they, they play the ball from everywhere from the 22. There's not really much kick in. Um, so, you know, I think you can blend the two together, if I'm honest. Um, you can blend the two together and, and then youngsters will enjoy it as well because I've also coached, you know, where youngsters have come through... Uh, and they haven't been good enough at that level for the first year or two and been shifted out. Uh, and then they go and play something for a year or two. And because they've got that experience of playing, then they, they sort of, they're ready for that level. So we can't rush them. Um, but they've got to play enough rugby as well. I think there's a lot of people talk about, you know, playing a lot, uh, enough rugby week in, week out. They're not just doing the gym or not just holding pads. You know, you've got to play rugby to improve. Yeah. And finally, for me, what do you think the purpose of the Premiership is? Is it development or is it? Or should it be completely separate and a focus just be on winning the league? Well, if you if if you've got a money back, I like stand it's all about winning. Um, this is the argument, see, because some clubs are taking it as development. Um, but with development, they made you know as coaches, you can hide behind that and you don't have to win games. You know, and I'm not, and I expect a lot of coaches say that as well. You know, rugby and any sport about winning for me. Um, you know, so you know. I've been in meetings with the WIU and generally the guys who are saying it's about development, you know, are, are really, they're just sitting on the WIU side, really, uh, and afraid to up, up, sort of uh, upset them. But um, there's four or five of the clubs where, you know, it's about winning because supporters, you know, they don't want to, they want to see winning rugby, they want to see trophies. Um, players who come down, you know, from the, from the regional academies, they want to be in a, a winning team and be challenging for things, you know, so... Um, you can mix it a little bit both. You know, it's got to be their player development as well, but not detriment to the clubs. And to finish, Lee, we got your teammates' quiz. It's going to be any, any players you played with or coached. But out all a lot, who is the worst dressed? Uh, the, 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 the worst dressed? I, I th Oh, God, it's been a few. Only, um... One that sticks to mind, uh, I coached, uh, this one's coaching, I, I, I've sort of lost a bit of a thing there, but one that sticks to mind, uh, worst rest would be um, Kyle Evans, who I coached at Merthyr. I just think he was very flamboyant in his dress sense, really. Um, he's gone to Doncaster now. Um, but uh, very fashionable, but some of the stuff, I suppose, is, the, you know, the 2020 gear, I'm not sure, but um, <laughs> some of the stuff he used to put on used to be shocking. And uh, who's the best drinker you've seen? <laughs> Coaches is chief. Um, he, can, he can drink. He can drink for three days. He can, um, you know, and uh, you don't want to get it wrong. You don't want to get it wrong with him because he will. Uh, he'll put you in a mess, the chief will. And uh, without sharing too much, who's the biggest liability you've seen on a night out? 
Oh, there's a few of those. Um, he'll give me some stick for this, but Matthew Jarvis is one of them. I'm sure he'll, he'll see this now and he'll give me some stick for it. Uh, who else? Oh, there's a few. I don't want to embarrass many, but Jarvis is a bit of a nuisance when he's out, the same as me, I expect. And uh, have you had a good changing room DJ in a change room today? Uh, yes, best changing room DJ is, um, that I've been around uh, again was in Merthyr. We didn't used to play a lot when I was playing, really. It wasn't a thing then, um, music in the changing rooms, to be honest. But uh, Matthew um, Dwyer, um, the ex-army boy, and then was uh, the hooker who was at uh, Merthyr with me as well. He loved to DJ in. Him and Terry G at Merthyr, they thought they, thought they were Kanye West, man. <laughs> and if you stuck on a desert island, who would be the two people you'd most want to be with and least want to be with? Oh, uh, two people I would, uh, the first person I, well, rugby players or in the coaching environment? Two ones you've been with. Right. Players, coaches, teammates. I'd say, um, I think probably be a good crack on the desert island to be with. And then, uh, who should I not be with? Um, Matthew Jarvis again, I expect. <laughs> He'd be on words with you later, wouldn't he? <laughs> All right, that's a wrap then for this episode. Thanks for giving up your time, Lou. No problem. Uh, remember to like and subscribe to the channel and follow us on Twitter at Welsh Prem Pod. Thank you for watching. Goodbye. Cheers, boys. Ta da.